Welcome back, everybody. We are here with Peter from Tweet Street, Scotland, also known as Cinnamon Bridges. This is our second little talk that we're doing with him. We are uh, fortunate enough to have him on again. And uh, we're going to talk about some more conspiracy theories, less to do with uh, Scotland. Or maybe, maybe less to do with Scotland, I don't know. But we we might get into how they affect Scotland as well. But we're also going to talk about some uh, World Health Organization stuff, some uh, uh, World Economic Forum stuff, about some Serbia, and maybe cover Djokovic as well in this segment. Welcome. Thanks very much for having us back on. Um, it's, It's... it's great to be on and great to, as I say, connect and, and discuss some of these finer points. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, finer points of these uh, theories and parodies that we want to make the general public aware of, of how humorous and how, how should I say, coincidental some of the things that we've come across in our daily lives are. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a where life meets movies in some of the cases. Um, <laughs> most of them sci-fi. Um, and hopefully the first clip that, that we're going to talk about um, gives people an insight into this is a serious discussion that, that these people are having whereas mm-hmm. it used to only be in movies that you used to see or hear of things like this um so there is theories that conspire to blur the lines between reality science and fiction. fiction and reality yeah so give us give us a give us a brief uh, intro, let's say, uh, of of what we're gonna see here at the World Economic Forum a Davos annual meeting, uh, 2023. Well, what we're going to see in this particular clip is um, the talk of uh, hacking the psychological element uh, of your life, your brain, um, through technology and i gotta interrupt in. have you heard of the facebook experiment where they used three four smaller countries uh, serbia included and they uh, and they changed what people would see on their feed and in the hope of affecting their mood and uh, their like making them more angry or more sad or whatever and they proved successful you've yes, heard of this um, yeah I, I have heard of it um it's again the experimental phase is how the uh, put it in to the general population or how they integrate it into the general population dependent upon results um, mm-hmm. and the results that they are hoping to get out of it sometimes are exceeded so therefore it gets fast tracked into the general population so that they can destabilize or We've got to give both sides of the coin so that they can improve society. And again, for improve, see destabilize. If you're, if it's by some tech, technological giant that's funded uh, by governments um, that are supposed to be the good guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this without video, further ado, yeah. yeah, yeah, let's play let's play the clip. Uh, I haven't seen this, so this is news to me. Um, well, no, maybe not what they say, but like the actual clip I haven't seen. So uh, let's get right into and make it. Make you see the future and understand a wonderful future where we can use brain waves to fight crime, be more productive, and find love. Let's roll. Sensing your joy, your playlist shifts to your favorite song. Sending chills up your spine as the music begins to play. You glance at the program running in the background on your computer screen and notice a now familiar sight that appears whenever you're overloaded with pleasure, your theta brainwave activity decreasing in the temporal regions of your brain. You mentally move the cursor to the left and scroll through your brain data over the past few hours. 
you can see your stress levels rising as the deadline to finish your memo approached, causing a peak in your beta brainwave activity right before an alert popped up, telling you to take a brain break. Your mind starts to wander to the new colleague on your team, whom you know you shouldn't be daydreaming about, given the policy against intra-office romance. But you can't help fantasize. Wait, wait, what? Intra-office romance is part of the future? And, and I, I, I don't know what to say, man. I, I might be looking at this objectively. In any case, let's, let's continue. Just a little. By the way, for the subscribers that are annoying that say I should stop uh, interrupting things, I do it for the like copyright strike, blah, 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 so that YouTube leave, lets us stay online. Understand? Thank you. But then you start to worry that your boss will notice your amorous feelings when she checks your brain activity and shift your attention back to the present. You breathe a sigh of relief when the email she sends you later that day congratulates you on your brain metrics from the past Nigga, quarter, what? which have earned you another performance bonus. When you arrive at work the next day, a somber cloud has fallen over the office. Along with emails text messages, and GPS location data. The government has subpoenaed employees' brainwave data from the past year. They have compelling evidence that one of your coworkers has committed massive wire fraud. Now, they're looking for his co-conspirator. I think there was a movie about something like this. It was supposed to be science fiction. Hold on, hold on. This is getting interesting. I haven't seen this. You're getting my, like, real reactions. This is fucking hilarious, by the way. Characters. You discover they are looking for synchronized brain activity between your coworker and the people he has been working with. While you know you're innocent of any crime, you've been secretly working with him on a new startup venture. Shaking, uh -oh. you remove your earbuds. A startup? Independence? Is it a future you're ready for? No, motherfucker! You may be surprised to learn that it's a future that has already arrived. No shit! Everything in that video that you just saw is based on technology that is already here today. Artificial wow, that's so cool! Enabled advances <laughs> in decoding brain activity in ways that we never before thought possible. After all, what you think, what you feel, it's all just data. Data that in large patterns... Data, you have no feelings, you have no life, it's all just data, comrade. It's just data. <laughs> ...can be decoded using artificial intelligence. We're not Ooh, talking about so cool. implanted devices of the future. I'm talking about wearable devices that are like Fitbits for your brain. The newest way to monitor attention is through a device like this one. These are ear pods that are launching later this year. These ear pods, much like the video you watched earlier, are ear pods that can pick up brainwave activity and tell whether or not a person is paying attention or their mind is wandering. Okay, well you might think, fine, but even if we can tell whether a person is paying attention or their mind is wandering, you can't tell what they're paying attention to. You would be wrong. It turns out that you can not only tell whether, whether a person is paying attention or their mind is wandering, but you can discriminate between the kinds of things that they're paying attention to. Whether Discrimination is bad. Like central tasks like programming, peripheral tasks like writing documentation, or unrelated tasks like surfing social media or online browsing. When you combine brainwave activity together with other forms of software and surveillance technology, the power becomes quite precise. So what do we do with this? What do we do with... We control the world. <laughs> in, the, in the voice of Klaus Schwab, hold on. Technology that enables yes, us to monitor God. brainwave activity for attention. Do we embrace it? Do we resist it? I believe that there is a pathway forward with such technology. Nobody cares what you believe. <laughs> use the technology to help people wake back up. This is a haptic <sighs> scarf that MIT Media Lab has developed, which uses brainwave technology Shock in a collar. responsive way to give a person a little buzz. A little Literally, buzz! <laughs> when their mind starts to wander to help them refocus and hone their attention. I'm Just giving to help you the positive them. use cases because what I don't want the reaction to be is let's ban this. Wait, those were the positive use cases. That's it. I think the video's done. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, that's hilarious. Thank you for sharing that so, with us. That, first that, off, a video. Uh, it's gonna make.
That was that was absolutely hilarious, man. <laughs> Sad, yeah, well, scary, that's, that's, but hilarious. That's your, your World Economic Forum uh, minority report, um, I think, <laughs> is, is is where it, it comes from, or where you <laughs> might have seen it on on TV, where they can tell you about crimes that you're going to commit, that you've thought about committing, yeah. assault police. Yeah. You will yep. own nothing and be happy. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, all, all that was missing was was Klaus Schwab sitting there on on the the podium or on the the the, the, the floor with his white cats just stroking it <laughs> and going, yes. It, it, insert insert Doctor Evil gif, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hi, but gif, gifs are another way that they they try and brainwash people um allegedly through some of the the visuals that are included in it um mm. we we'd spoke about the the facebook project um there's a again another conspiracy that gifts certain gifts that they, they use and certain people use more often than others mm-hmm. are used to to trigger an emotion to trigger Anger, whether it be um, at somebody, at an organisation, at a, a group, whatever the case may be. Um, well, yeah, since the things. since the SMO since the SMO started, like if you told me about this before, I'd say you're crazy. But since the SMO started, I can tell you for sure that I've come across these weaponized gifts, like literally weaponized gifts that are flashing images of like you know dead soldiers and like so on and so forth that are meant to like you know cause uh, cause uh, how should i say uh, involuntary reaction basically on a on a primor- primeval level or like a, you know reptilian brain level uh, in inside your head and they're uh, incessantly used by let's say pro ukrainian neo nazi uh, internet warriors uh, when when they attack in in scores like other channels, you know. So I've well, come across. Well, I'm I'm saying like I've come across this weaponized uh, GIF idea. Yeah. Um. But if we go back to 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 something that we spoke about on the 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 last uh, recording, um, mm-hmm. and it was the first you'd asked about the first minister's support for the Ukro. Ukrainistanians or Ukro Nazis, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the former Scottish Ukraine. Yeah, the Scottish the fo- government have given, I believe, sixty-five million pounds. Um, oh come on, they could have given another million yeah. and made it sixty-six and made it a like nice, sexy number, you know? Like yeah, they could have well, been a little more satanic. <laughs> yeah, sixty-six or six hundred and sixty-six or sixty-six point six, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, there was six hundred thousand uh, pounds went missing mm-hmm. from the Scottish Independence Fund. Uh, that's just digressing away from what we were talking about. Yeah, so the World Economic Forum, um, the it's, it's the elite ruling over countries that they don't uh, have. They've not been elected in. Um, mm-hmm. It's an elite program to take the sovereignty from each individual, let alone the countries of which each individual is in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a very uh, strange time to be alive, is the, is the, is the only way that I can put it across. Because Agenda yeah. 2030 was supposed to be a conspiracy theory. However, mm-hmm. you've now got them pushing all of these uh, Davos um, inspired ideas and <laughs> technologies artificial intelligence i mean they say that art imitates life so artificial intelligence imitates real intelligence but yet the people with that intelligence or without that intelligence have the intelligence huh, dampened down so that <laughs> They believe that they've got to rely on the artificial intelligence for information. It's like an infinite you know, loop. Yeah, yeah. There's there's something about that. And you said about primordial. Yeah, it goes to a primordial level. Um, mm-hmm. You're soon you're soon going to believe that 
robots are more effective at everything than what humans ever were. So that's yeah. where they're at. That's where they're taking us. Um, and it's it's a it's a dangerous time to be alive. It's uh, very very interesting. You know, like when I was a kid. A long, long time ago, maybe not as long as you, but still long enough, much longer than hey, I'd hey. like to have been. But, but when I was a kid, I thought, you know, like life is boring. The good times were like long time ago, like the 60s, 70s, uh, you know, or or even or even the 50s, the were cool, you know, the 20s, the roaring 20s, whatnot. But realistically, you know, some people maybe would say even World War II was an interesting time to be alive. But the point is, uh, no, the time that we are alive in now is, is unfortunately, you know, I, I can't remember who told me this, but somewhere they, they use that as a curse. May you live in interesting times. Um, yeah, oh, not, so we definitely not... live in interesting times. Oh, well, it's interesting that like, if you if you if you want to say that danger is, is interesting, um, if that's mm-hmm. your, your, I mean, I used to think that jumping off cliffs into the sea was interesting, <laughs> um, or climbing up uh, Monroe's in Scotland was interesting. And then but you did those this, things and realized not so much, huh? Well, I, I did them and I, I enjoyed them. I thought they were they were um, riveting uh, when you mm-hmm. got to the top of a Monroe or when you. You jumped off a cliff into the sea um, yeah. and su- and survived without serious injury. Then they were euphoric, you know. It's like, oh, it's yeah. great to it's great to be alive. Uh, yeah, but this yeah, is more. True. This is a different version. Of interesting. Hmm. This is a more uh, apocalyptic. Interesting. And apocalyptic yeah. in the in the true sense, not in the like uh, cliche sense. It's not like end of the world apocalyptic. It's the revealing apocalyptic. The revealing. The revealing. A, a, yeah. A, a, apocalypse actually from Greek means to reveal or to yeah, unhide. Yeah, re- revelations. That's revelations, isn't isn't that it's a, apocalypse? Yeah. It's, it's the, the great revelation. Mm-hmm. And, and, and new beginning, started. shall we say? Exactly, and it's definitely started because there's so many things that have been revealed or, uh, you know, that have come out into the light from, as you said, Epstein things to like God knows what else um, that has all come out to light, including the bioterrorism and the secret labs and the like patents for COVID from like 2017 and, you know, all kinds of things have been revealed. Let's put it that way. And Trump is now rumored to almost be back on Twitter. And he's uh, back on Facebook and Instagram, so you know, we have only good things to look forward to, right? Uh, again, <laughs> it's, it's like picking one. Of, which one of your friends is going to shag your wife? That's just that's, that's <laughs> the, <laughs> the options that you're left with. <laughs> you know, uh, again, it's jumping from the frying pan into the fire, or jumping from the, the fire into the frying pan. Depending mm-hmm. on your persuasion on things, I'd, I'd much rather that <clears throat> people in their own countries decided for themselves what they were going to do and what was best for the, the, the country, rather than... Considering, considering we're think, on the topic of the World Economic Forum, how does it play into Scotland? Like, what is, what is their plan specifically for Scotland, and what is Scotland's, as in most of Scotland's opinion on, uh, on the World Economic Forum, by your gauge? By my gauge is the Scotland has sheep as a as a hashtag that I put on Twitter for a lot of things. Um, and when I say that Scotland has sheep, they're looking for a shepherd, and the shepherd just happens to be <laughs> either Nicola Sturgeon or Alex Salmond. Um, when in actual fact, neither the two of them are shepherds; they're false prophets. The fifteen time out. Cities... Scotland Scotland is Scotland is known for sheep, right? For sheep, uh, how is it called? Herding or, or growing? Uh, what is well, it called? Farming. Um, cloning, more like <laughs> they, they cloned Dolly. Wait, the was Dolly was Dolly the 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 sheep cloned in Scotland? Yes, Dolly the sheep was cloned in Scotland. Um, there you go. So holy that's shit, why I say that, that Scotland has sheep because people are cloned or not necessarily cloned. Their their brains are occupied with fear. Um, mm-hmm. They know how to. To keep people occupied 
Uh, yeah, paralysed with fear. So it's a case of they, they will keep talking about the distractions or oh, this, 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 mm -hmm. rather than what's coming down the track. And this is coming down the track. You've got digital identifications, uh, digital trials starting in Scotland in 2023. The infrastructure has been uh, accepted by the Scottish government. The Scottish government's uh, green plan is to have uh, a, a more a more worldly carbon footprint for the size of Scotland. It's not going to make a difference, being honest. So they're going to stop drilling for oil. They're going to stop producing oil, allegedly. Mm -hmm. uh, the <laughs> The people are occupied by transgenderism. They're occupied by the lure of independence when there's nothing getting done about it. Um, and it's all fear-mongering whilst the, the vaccine that was, that was due to save everybody that, that, that stopped transmission of the, 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 the virus, that stopped you from catching the virus, the efficacy was 90%. It started at 95%. It's now down somewhere along, around the region of 35%. Um, it's a joke. Fa and falling. Like the, yeah, yeah and, and falling. That's like a key point, yeah. Yeah, falling off a cliff. Um, again, there's we've got the, the highest excess death rates in Scotland that have been reported in the last 30 years, um, 35 years. Are you higher? Uh, are you higher than Australia? I think Australia is in the lead. I think Australia might be in the lead, but I'm talking about on a, on a, a Scotland basis. Oh, yeah. Scotland, Scotland basis, Scotland yeah, yeah, yeah. Historically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we've over in the last 35 years, we've got the highest excess death rates. Now they'll say that the NHS is the cause of that. Well, they've they're dancing in hospitals and rather than treating yeah. people that are sick. And anybody, they're denying that the that these uh, issues that are starting to arise, like turbo cancers, like myocarditis, like pericarditis, mm -hmm. um, that these are... That, I mean, they're, they're pointing their fingers everywhere other than... Well, when did all this... When did all these excess deaths you... start? When did they start these happening? And... It seems to correlate from when the introduction of the the, the vaccine program started. Since you since you definitely looked into this to subject matter more than I have, uh, what is your take on the long COVID uh, issue? Um, that's that's basically for the vaccinated. That's, yeah. That, that's my take on it. That, that's my own personal mm -hmm. thoughts on it. Because um, allegedly, what you've I've, gathered, yeah. I've, allegedly I, I've had COVID. I've tested positive for COVID. Allegedly, uh, whilst I was in All hospital right. for uh, for another matter. Um, mm -hmm. So, again, what the 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 thing that 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 bends my brain a bit is you get all these vaccines and boosters, mm -hmm. but they give you. They give you free test kits to keep on testing, but if these vaccines and boosters work, then why would you need to test for for? They change the definition of vaccine. Against? Vaccine, yeah, yeah. They change the definition of vaccine po post uh, COVID or during COVID or whatever. But the point is, like a vaccine, whereas before vaccine would mean you don't catch it, now vaccine means you don't get severely affected by it. You know ah, what well, I mean? Just, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the meme that, that goes about. It started off. Your ninety percent efficacy. Um, you're vaccinated against this. Then it drops to <laughs> five. You're vaccinated. It goes down to like you die, well. but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel good yeah. about it. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you die, but then it goes down to zero. You die, but you go straight to heaven. <laughs> you know, like yeah. oh great, the false positive. Like, oh yeah. You, you no die, comment. You, and about the tests. Die, but, you, you mentioned you mentioned going in and for something else and then getting tested. Uh, I I was immediately gonna like react with, you know, it depends on on the I forgot what it, I think it was called the number of cycles that they do of the specimen, like whether it's 50 cycles or 100 cycles and past some certain number, like everyone's positive, like if they amplify it enough times. So like yeah. basically they change the number of cycles that they 
test at and they didn't tell people and they still considered it the valid test the world health organization did which is a good segue into the world health organization which is our next topic but um they changed the number of cycles so that basically they would get more positive results even though those people yeah. were not positive with anything technically yes well, again, from my understanding the, there was another meme that went um they've cured coronavirus <laughs> and it was just it was just somebody smashing up the tv you know <laughs> um yes again like i would be classed as 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 what they class a, an anti-vaxxer on my uh podcast i, I had somebody from america uh from florida uh speaking i about saw that one yeah they'd been injured as a result mm-hmm. of taking the back the, the bioweapon vaccine uh bioweapon uh, sorry vaccine um they'd been injured as a result of taking it um mm-hmm. and they were a hospital worker um and it, again they've to hush up we're not allowed to say anything about it, it it's again there's there's all of this coming out i don't know if you've seen the, the project veritas video uh sting that they've done on a, a, mm-hmm. a pfizer worker um and it's Again, some people say, yeah, this there's, is there's another, story. there's another meme, there's another meme I saw the other day, considering this is a comedy show, um, <laughs> that, that says, that says, uh, what's it called, uh, every, every, every Project Veritas video, <laughs> and it's like, you're not from Project Veritas, are you? No. Okay, so. <laughs> 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 yeah, there are, there are other there are other sting stingers out there other than Project Veritas, but yes, but they do they a, do a really good job. They do I a know, really good I mean, job about a lot of things, and and the thing is, like, if anybody wants to see how a donation page should look, go check out um, Project Veritas donation page. Like, once I get to some kind of level and I open up a donation page, that is something that I want to aspire to. If you've got stock and shares that you want to donate to them, there's a way for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Project Veritas has a donation page like nobody else. That's all I can tell you. Uh, well, um, well, that, here's, here's just a, they're here's serious, just a, though. A, a wee plug for, for Tweet Street Scotland Occupied is uh, that there will, ahead, never yeah. be, there will never be a donations page. Nobody will ever be asked to pay for something that I do for free. Um, that's how it goes. I yep. try and expose the information that others want to put behind paywalls. So, um, yep. and that's why I use the, the the tools that I do on YouTube, free mm-hmm. on uh, Facebook, free on Twitter, free yep. on Rumble, free and on Telegram for free. So uh, mm-hmm. that's just a wee plug for Tweet Street. Everybody, uh, everything is Excellent. free, and you'll never be asked to donate for anything. I so far have not asked for any donations, but I'm going to have to uh, get around to it sooner or later because like I'm not working anywhere else and I don't have other sources of income. But now I'm just, uh, you know, diving off into the deep end of my own little uh, stash. But the point is I haven't asked for donations yet either. And I'm going to get around to it at some point. But as you say, the information will be free. If people want to just like supplement out of their own goodwill, I'm not going to say no. In fact, I'll say thank you very, very, very much. Instead of going to buy a Starbucks, you've helped me buy a sandwich, <laughs> you know, or something well, like that. Well, but but the, but the idea is that the, the videos and the content will be free. You know what I mean? It'll be a yep. voluntary subscription at some point. But for now, everything is still free. Let's see if we can even get to like a thousand subscribers. That's our first goal. Thousand subscribers on YouTube, everybody. Like, share, subscribe, click here, both on my channel and on Peter's channel. Um, and uh, yeah, let's segue into the World Health Organization. Where's my cursor? There it is. Uh, let's do this. Come check this, guys. Healing Web Part 1, starting in the upper left-hand corner. 
We're going to begin our search by focusing on these names, Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, and Rockefeller. In the 1930s, they effectively bought up all the universities and the medical industry. They controlled the WHO, the Red Cross, the USDA, the EPA, and the FDA. All these different government agencies are designed to keep us unhealthy. They're not designed to keep us healthy. Let's go over to Planned Parenthood right? Eugenics, Julian Huxley, and Parent Parenthood. What do they all have in common, guys? Look into the founder of this organization. Okay, sterilization, why? Caudaceous, the staff of Hermes. This is the medical symbol, right? You see this in hospitals. He is the god of trade, trickery, and thieves. The Department of Defense, no why are way. they in charge of the CDC and the National Institute of Health? And what is Agenda 21? Things that make you go, hmm. Research, guys, research. So, um, Very, that, that, let's get this guy off the screen. Hold on, hold on, let me get this guy off the screen. <laughs> uh, where are we? There we are. Okay, that was a very interesting video. I would not seen that, and when I played it originally to check it before we, we went live, uh, I, my reaction is, you're going to get me kicked off of YouTube if the Rand paper and the Donetsk reportage doesn't get me kicked off YouTube. I think you're going to get me kicked off YouTube with your conspiracy theories, man. I uh, say uh, it's all of these conspiracies are going wild, man. They're going wild, and again, it's tell it's, me, it's tell me, to... tell me about the World Health Organization. How does Scotland oh. feel, and how do you feel about it? Um, S Scotland probably <laughs> feels captured uh, by it, and when I say captured, they they may not be aware. I have raised the World Health Organization on the the last um, broadcast that, that I did, which was part one of two. Um, there's mm -hmm. a, a part two of that coming up that brings it closer to Scotland. But the World Health Organization, um, they done a, a crisis management tool on uh, vaccine hesitancy and how they, uh, how they manage expectations um, in a crisis when people start to question things. Hesitancy. Do, yeah, hesitancy is such an Orwellian term. It's not hesitancy. I'm not hesitant, motherfucker. I'm I'm refusing to take it. <laughs> There's no hesitancy. Uh, it's not happening. But they, they've actually done, they've actually put a code together for uh, people that are unvaccinated. There are codes now um, that will describe what <laughs> why you're unvaccinated. Whether you're just against vaccination. Whether you're against it for religious purposes. Whether you're against it. For, so they have like levels uh, of, of conspiracy yeah, theorists now. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're defining them. And the again, WHO, defined, you're saying, huh? Yeah, uh, World Health Organization. So the 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 last uh, broadcast that I, that I put out was going through that um, the the uh, the vaccine um, or pandemic response crisis management. No, mm -hmm. these are pro. These are um, training programs that they train out to influencers, the media, um, the select people, that, the bad faith actors, as I call it, the people that, that need to get it right and need to manage, crisis manage the situations that arise. And in previous employment that I've had, I used to create such um, programs, um, communication training programs, uh, programs on how to train the trainer um so you would train the in this case uh the media representatives or the faces that are going to be appearing on camera you would give them all of the training and the questionings that they would you would potentially face so that you had a way to get round about anything that was left field or anything that was was out of your comfort zone and how you bring it back into your comfort zone with distraction. So um, the World Health Organization are doing the same uh, on a global, uh, on a, all the countries of the, the, the West and again, the countries that they, they are infecting is the, the best way to put it. That's my take on um... it. Uh, it's very, very uh, well put. I mean, it's a uh, more or less military project. It's, uh, you know... Yeah, you would being... think it was a... You would think it was a military operation, the way that they've done it. Mm-hmm. Nudge, yeah. nudge, wink, wink. 
and it's Psy and it's worldwide, and it's worldwide. I don't know, man. When you when you sent me the list of things that you wanted to bring up, um, when I saw the WEF as and the WHO as in the World Economic Forum and the World uh, Health Organization of the UN, um, my two comments were like, "What do you want me to say, man?" <laughs> like, <laughs> like everything is pretty fucking obvious. You know what I mean? The both organizations are either occupiers or occupied. And there was that like one part during the COVID epidemic where there was some kind of rumor of somebody in the lower uh, levels of the World Health Organization who was like uh, going up against Tedros or whatever his name is. And, uh, and then that got quieted down after like three days or something and uh he was at the top again and end of story and uh, the satanism continued yeah but well that's 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 how uh, a lot of people i mean should be... the world government continued i mean yeah yeah that's how a lot of people should be should be viewing the world government um because there, there is a there is always a battle between good and evil i mean they've, they've indoctrinated people to believe that there is no such thing as uh, one or other. Um, mm -hmm. Although in years gone past, I don't know if you can remember seeing the cartoons that you used to you used to see, where you had the the little devil in one shoulder and the angel in the other shoulder. Um, mm -hmm. That was you know, playing with your conscious conscience. Um, they're now doing it on a, a global level. Yeah. Where they're trying to tell you that everything that we are doing is good and don't go against your, your gut don't go against your, your inner thoughts on it repetition is the key fear is the key they fear people into believing that they're on the side of good because the person or the face that they see is a celebrity or as um, a politician or a, a sports star or 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 and so mm -hmm. there are, uh, it's again, we'll go back to it's like a military operation, like a psyops. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know that the, in the US, I can't remember what year, maybe it was three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. You know, time flies, especially when you're locked down. But the, the point is, uh, at some point in the US, they passed a law where uh, it became legal to use uh, military propaganda tactics on the domestic population. Um, yes. they, they actually had to legalize it so that they can be, you know, <laughs> in the and clear. They've been, and they've been doing it for, well, MKUltra and, and, and other... Well, yeah, yeah, that that's, that's like old school. But this is like actual, and like Project Mockingbird and so on and so forth. Yes. But this is, this is like actual like declaration of use of propaganda against the domestic population of their own country. It's just, you know. Yeah, and, it, oh, and, and the States okay. as well. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it says in the States, uh, United States Constitution, Bill of Rights, um, that you will defend against foreign and domestic terrorism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard to do that when it's your own government that, that's, that's providing that terrorism. Um, yeah, indoctrination, whatever, whatever the case may be, and the only thing, the only thing the media. Americans have up on the rest of the world is that the, they're armed in this situation at least. So when it shit hits the fan, at least like the one side will be armed, as well. You know what I mean? Well, and if if you go with uh, what's happening in the, the the states at the minute, um, they're mm -hmm. making race incidents uh, out of police. Uh, killing brutality type, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah police like brutality. A, they're fueling a race war, basically. Yeah, yeah, fueling a race war and the class and also, war, and a class war, and also with the the um, active shooter situations, they're trying to narrow down the gun laws. Um, to which I'm against weapons. I'm against a uh, war, um, but I'm all for good winning out over evil. Because we all know mm -hmm. that that's what happens anyway, but um, yeah, in certain countries, well, they well they've got um, certain laws. Then the laws should be available for both sides and not just for the governmental side. Mm -hmm. 
or for the benefit of both sides, not just for the benefit of the, the government who means to control you. Yeah. Like, the laws should be there to limit the government, not the people. But, yep. uh, but the point is... Uh, just to be clear, I'm pro guns and pro war. Haha. <laughs> well, not pro war in the classical sense. <laughs> I, I like, you know, as as Texans, and this has nothing to do with Russell Texans Bentley. This has to do with Texans in general, or anywhere in the South in the U.S. As they'll tell you, the only person to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And uh, when seconds count, the police are minutes away. That's pretty simple. You know, and of course, all that comes with, you know, you got to be trained in firearm safety and handling and respect for a firearm. You know, you don't yeah. hand them out like cookies. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? So I am pro, I am pro gun in that sense. And Serbia is generally considered like a very gun toting country in Europe. We, whereas the Americans have like 1.2 or 1.4 guns per person we have 0.8 or 0.9 we're the second highest in the world except most of them are not declared <laughs> um, <laughs> and they're like <laughs> left over in people's basements from world war ii um, oh, i was just going to say they weren't they weren't shipped in for ukraine were they uh no no well there, there have been there have been incidents of serbian weapons being shipped to ukraine yeah um there the the serbian uh let's say government here has been uh, playing both sides for a while now and the Serbian people are not too happy about it, let's put it that way. Or at least the silent majority is not too happy about it. Of which I was a part. I was a part of the silent majority. And then I decided to not be silent. <laughs> well, I, I think a lot of people, I think that's what happens is you've got, um, you've got people that go along to get along is the best way that I can kind of try and uh, neutralise the, the, this chat. Um, you go along to get along. Mm -hmm. But then you've got people that um, if you get punched in the eye after going along to get along, you mm -hmm. punch back in the eye twice as hard and twice as fast and twice as many times. Or, or both eyes immediately. Yeah. Well, again... <laughs> You go back to eye for the eye, tooth for the tooth, you know, but mm -hmm. you turn the other cheek. But then when an eye's been taken, then it's justifiable for you to take the eye of someone else. Um, aye, yeah. so if we try and neutralise it that way rather than the, the big spaghetti western type uh, view on it, it, it is, it's a case of, well, you, you see what's happened. I, I certainly see what's happened, even though the western media try to hide what's happened in. Mm -hmm. uh, Ukraine, where they've financed their their uh, Maidan coup, they've financed the 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 rise of the Fourth Reich, as, as far as I can see. Um, did you Ukraine. know? Did you know that the European Union was the occupation plan of the German, i.e., no, no German, uh, Third Reich German. Uh, uh, economic minister for uh, controlling and unifying the the conquered territories. Yeah, it's, it's and, like, again, it's it's like the the 1984, is it? <laughs> the ministry, <laughs> the ministry of truth, the ministry yeah. of hell. Everything that they say it's the ministry for is the opposite. It's, it's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So the the third Reich seemed not to have died it just went underground um, mm -hmm. and found a home at the World Economic Forum the World Health Organization NATO NATO yeah NATO the, <laughs> the, the, the peaceful force um, a force a force for good um, I saw I saw a meme I saw a meme today of like you know FedEx or Federal Express turning into FedEx and McDonald's rebranding and Nike rebranding and like whatever. <laughs> and at the end, Nazis and NATO. Um, so it's just rebranding, basically. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, it's given, given a bad name, a new name that mm. plays out to be good um, with the, the same ulterior motives behind it. You know, like, yeah. that's where we find ourselves in 2023 that's where we find ourselves at the minute
Yeah, somewhere in between 1984, A Brave New World, and Fahrenheit 451. I, yeah. <laughs> that's also that's also a meme. Um, so let's uh, stop discussing memes. You also wanted to talk about Serbia, uh, considering yes. I'm from Serbia. What do you want to know? What do you what interests you? Like what, what, what is it that, that I can help you with? What interests me is um, the reports of that we get. We don't get too much of them, but what we do get, we get reported of a a place called um, Kosovo. Now, my understanding is that it's Serbia. That's um, the only understanding that matters. That's that, right. that that's all there is to it. Thank you. We can close the subject now. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go go ahead. Uh, resol- right. UN Resolution twelve forty four. Uh, outlines that it is an uh, integral part of Yugoslavia, of Serbia, as does um, as does the Serbian Constitution. The Serbian Constitution specifically says that it is a part of Serbia. So there is no legal debate about it. <laughs> you well, know. There you go. It's like the Minsk Accord. Um, that that. Uh, um, what was the Ukraine, UN Germany, and France. Well, yeah, the, the Minsk well, again, Accords. Yeah, the Minsk Accord again. The it was allegedly set up to buy time to no. arm Ukraine to the tree, to the teeth. Russian to, propaganda, man. Everybody who I bring on this show has Russian propaganda. Everybody. The American guy had Russian propaganda. The Russian guy had Russian propaganda. You've got Russian pro. I don't understand. This Russian propaganda is everywhere, man. It's, it's, it's getting it's getting about, isn't it? Like they try and keep <laughs> they try and keep all of this this to just just accept the propaganda that we give and nobody else. Or the information if, that other if it's the first time the the, if it's the first given, time Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but I gotta speak directly to the viewers. If it's the first time that you're coming across this channel, check out the Rand report because there's like historical Russian propaganda in our Rand report video that I did with George a couple of weeks ago. Um, it is hilarious. Like uh, back in like 150, 200 years ago, the Russians must have infiltrated the academic circles and put in uh, Russian propaganda into American literary uh, and historical terms. You know what I mean? Because it's all out there on paper, basically, and it's all Russian propaganda. Continue. Sorry to interrupt. Ask me about Serbia. I was was pretty much coming to the the point that there's a... (laughs) There is a, some, I don't know if it's a rumour, maybe you can clarify that the Serbian, is it the Prime Minister or the, the President, the Prime Minister, mm-hmm. um, is not Serbian? Well, he's Serbian, because everybody who has a Serbian document is Serbian, but uh, there's a rumour and you know who am I to judge? I'm not a you know genetologist or geneticsologist or like a biological hereditary scientist. But if you look at a picture in the video of this like one gentleman who used to work with the mother of the current president, and you look at the picture of the current president, um, he looks a lot more like the current president than the current president official father. Uh, oh. And and this gentleman and this gentleman is uh, is uh, how should I say of uh, non-Serbian ethnic background probably Albanian Kosovar, but um, he was working with the current president's mother in uh, in the state TV station and then you know things happened and. Uh, now, if you look at the pictures, the picture's worth a thousand words. That's all I got to say. I don't have it handy. I'm not going to find it. But the point is, uh, you know, I'm not a genealogist or, you know, facial recognition software person specialist. <laughs> so I can't tell. But, you know, I, I, I can't be sure. 
but seeing as we're discussing all kinds of conspiracy theories, sure, why not? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, that, 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 sounds, that's, that sounds a wee bit like the the uh, the who's going to be the the the, the new monarch in uh, England and Scotland um, and Wales, uh, and his uh, second child, Harry. Prince Harry. And Canada, um, and Canada, and Australia—they're also still part of. Oh well, yeah. That, that, again, that's 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 the. If the oh, if the monarch the if the if the monarch can abolish your parliament, shh, you, yeah. you're part of the monarchy. Yeah. Um, but if it, well, it's it's like the 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 story of um, James Hewitt being. Looking more like um, <laughs> Prince Harry, looking more like James Hewitt than he does uh, yeah. Prince Charles, who's soon to be the new monarch. Um, mm-hmm. And that was a, a an allegation that then Princess Diana had an affair, a uh, premarital affair before Dodie Fayed. Um, mm-hmm. So, the, the, but again, these things seem to be commonplace within um, <laughs> the elite. You would you would maybe hint that the, the, the they have orgies or or they they have I don't know what gathering. it is I don't know if it's orgies or if it's by design or if they find them specifically but yeah you're right there's a lot of there's a lot of these uh, circumstances coincidences incidences that that are suspicious and it's the more or less same storyline everywhere across time and they always find these compromised people who like they have shit on to put in power and use however they want to be used. And what I don't understand is like, you know, like, okay, like the, 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 the incriminating stuff is out there. Just like get it over with, you know, like admit to it. And like, we know it's true already. So just admit to it and don't let them use you, use it to blackmail you. Sorry. Don't let them use it to use it to blackmail you and get free of the chains and do what's actually good for humanity. But on the other side, I think they're in too deep, and they're in the satanic cult, and uh, you know, there's not much they can do. Yeah, maybe that's why they're introducing those ear, ear things that the wef, the, the video <laughs> of the wef, has seen just so that they can tell for sure by brainwave activity. Yeah, there might be an ulterior motive to them after all that no, mm. none of us can see. Um, ah, well, that that was pretty much it. Was just to find out a wee bit about uh, Serbia um, and. There's no nobody better to find out about than, than somebody that's that's there and is from the yeah the, yeah yeah no like <laughs> ask away if you've got any other questions like the other the other thing one of the other things that you uh, mentioned that kind of you know I can use to like kind of tie these two things together considering we're getting like uh, over fifty minutes into this uh, talk um, we don't want to bore the viewers too long too much at the same time we have to spread out the torture. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, they choose to listen to us. We don't force them. You That's know it. what I? There's um, no brainwave activity. Yeah, we're not forcing you to watch this through like electromagnetic manipulation. But um, yeah, no, we were talking about um the the world government and so on, and then you asked me about Serbia, and it's uh, worth mentioning that you know like that witch or a spirit cooker. Um, Maria Abramovich, I think her name is Marina mm-hmm. Abramovich. Um, a very famous uh, worldwide Satanist, and uh, other li- nice titles that she has: uh, hobbies, uh, artist, stuff like that. Pictures with Rockefeller covered in blood and cakes with like uh, human disfigured bodies, um, stuff like that. Uh, she got ordained by the Serbian government, uh, one of the highest uh, possible, uh, you know, uh, medals that you can get from the Serbian government. So, like, that tells you where our occupied, or how did you call them in that other video? Administration. That's where our administration stands at now, currently. Not to mention that, you know, we have uh, NATO offices within our uh, Ministry of Defense offices, we don't have Russian offices within our Ministry of Defense offices, but we've got NATO offices within our Ministry of Defense offices. I think I've said offices enough times. But yeah, um, so we're definitely occupied. 
And uh, the, another topic that you asked about was Djokovic. And yes. uh, what, do I th- what do I think of Djokovic? And for Djokovic, I prepared a, a, a slideshow for everyone. Let me get that slideshow on the monitor. There we go. Uh, let me get it up on here. Uh, both plus TV. There we go. This is Djokovic with uh, the little Soros. <laughs> Alexander Soros and uh, everybody knows who Soros is or Soros and uh, uh, who doesn't should find out Um, and uh, not only is Djokovic's meeting with him more or less regular but so is our president's like our president meets with this little boy um, too often for my liking like every two three months and at one point our president was getting uh, advice from uh, Tony Blair you know the war criminal yeah, um, yeah. Well, uh, well, he's and he he was he's gonna be knighted seriously no he has been knighted oh he has been knighted that's that's he's hilarious yeah. so Sir Tony Blair huh yeah. um, so Sir so, so, Tony Blair it has saves been against sorry. Prosecution. He what? I say, I'm saying it saves against prosecution if, uh, if you're a. Oh, knight. so it's like a diplomatic cover, huh? Pretty much, yeah. I like that scene from Lethal Weapon three or four, where he says diplomatic immunity has been revoked, <laughs> yeah. or as uh, Russell Tex- Texas Bentley calls him, legitimate targets. In any case, so Soros has been meeting regularly with Djokovic and with um, our president. And if you don't know who Soros is and you think he's a good guy, you need a re-education and not in the, uh, not in the <laughs> New World Order kind of way. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one picture. Let's see uh, what other pictures we have on the subject of uh, Djokovic. Well, here's another picture on the subject of Djokovic. This is him on various, uh, you know, advertisements for various products. And as you can see, uh, the one eye Satanist symbolism is prominent. So anybody who tells me that Djokovic is a good guy has not done enough research. You know, when the whole uh, anti-vax thing became a thing, he uh, basically was the hero of the anti-vaxxers because he was like, uh, he was like, wow, a celebrity anti-vaxxer who's like uh, pure and he's a vegan and whatever. But as we who have uh, dabbled in the esoteric and uh, and uh, hidden world of uh, Illuminati and Satanism uh, know, uh, the Illuminati or the Masons have a saying, when they need a hero, we shall provide them with one. And in this case, yeah. I think he is the perfect uh, example of this, uh, you know, planted hero, basically, who is supposed to be an anti-vaxxer. And at the same time, he's got, um, he's got, uh, I think it's a company somewhere, I forget whether it's uh, Switzerland or somewhere further north in Europe. I know it was somewhere there. Um, and uh, like Switzerland, Sweden, somewhere in between them. He's got like a company that does like some kind of like healthy vaccines from the future. And he spent like, you know, 40 million or something on research during COVID uh, about like uh, healthy vaccines. So like anybody who's developing healthy vaccines and not taking not healthy vaccines um, (laughs) is not really on my side. Let's put it that way. Ah, well, I can understand, like, as you say, um, they always say that they'll, people, pl- you've got people on both sides, you're playing, you're covering both sides of the coin, so mm-hmm. whatever, la- whatever side the coin lands on, you're covering that eventuality also is the best yep. way to win. Um, yeah. Because a lot, a lot of people were going, uh, I'd I don't know what that that last uh, uh, headline was because I don't. I'll, I'll go through them one by one. I'm just flipping for the viewers to like not get bored. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the uh, pr- providing a hero on either side of the, mm-hmm. the eventuality, um, mm-hmm. and that's what 
Soros and, and Rockefeller and the Rothschilds do. They, they finance both sides of the war. And have been so, doing for like the last hundred-ish years, if not 300. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, last, yeah. Let me let last... me let me narrate let me narrate the re the less the rest of these little uh, slides. Um, this is uh, Djokovic and uh, Vucic, the president, um, during uh, uh, I think one of the protests that we had here. There's uh, Rio Tinto is an Australian company owned by uh, a former or like managed by a former. Prime Minister of Australia, or no, the current Prime Minister of Australia was the the head of uh, Rio Tinto, which is a mining company worldwide, which found some kind of uh, new lithium in Serbia, and they started exploiting it, and uh, and or they started uh, drilling illegally without permits um, to test the sites. And they were coming to people's lands without, uh, like, you know, in the middle of the night and stealing land, uh, soil, so that they could, uh, so that they could test it to get the quality. Um, and the people rose up and there was huge protests for like, I don't know, maybe four or five, maybe even longer weeks consecutively, um, like every, every uh, weekend. And uh, finally, after like three, because he doesn't get involved, Djokovic, in uh, local politics, basically at all. Finally, he said something like, you know, this is bad, blah, blah, like we shouldn't ruin our nature and like, blah, blah, we don't need the lithium. Germany has like six times more lithium than Serbia does, but they don't mine it, but they want to mine ours. Um, <laughs> and uh, basically... Basically, this uh, this is a picture of Djokovic going for a uh, tête-à-tête, as they would call it in French, or a little chat with the big boss. Um, and uh, after that, he <laughs> he didn't mind so much the the whole uh, you know mining of lithium and ruining of Serbia's fertile lands. So that's that. This is his wife's account where she uh, brags that uh, she did an interview with uh, Marina Abramovich the like Satanists we discussed uh, I love her spirit oh my god like what a spirit what a Satanist like oh my god yeah <laughs> um, yeah so that's Djokovic's wife whose family also owns uh, what are they called? Micro hydroelectric plants company, which basically dams off little rivers, uh, spoils natural water reservoirs, and uh, sells the electricity to people who don't need it because they still have electricity from uh, Soviet, oh, I mean communist, I mean socialist systems from when Yugoslavia existed. Which, if only they were kept, uh, you know, in working order, would uh, would be more than enough to supply us and the neighbors. But instead, uh, they want us on micro hydroelectric dams that poison and kill fish. Um, so this one says uh, exclusive uh, photos with uh, the guru that uh, brought Imaza, who is uh, Pepe Imaz. I don't know who Pepe Imaz is. This was like a post, so I just took all of them. Um, I'm guessing it's nothing pretty, if it's among this collection of, uh, of uh, screenshots. Uh, Djokovic World Bank Foundation partner to promote early childhood development in Serbia and globally. Early childhood development, that sounds so good. It sounds like it's something that we should all support. What do you think? Do you support early childhood development? Like, how can you not well, support that? It depends if it's got a transgender, a transgender <laughs> agenda or subhuman I, I, agenda. I don't think it even has to be transgender. If it's anti-family, if it's anti, like, you know anything if it's anti-reproduction if it's anti like if it's like teaching kids about sex if it's like you know anti-history yeah. there's a lot of things that it could be under the guise of early childhood development it's the best thing for a child <laughs> yeah again it sounds like as if it's a, a government overreach sponsored program i don't know but whatever it is whatever it is it doesn't sound it doesn't sound good to me like i'll put it that way 
And here he is uh, shilling, as one would say, for Ruffheisen Bank. Ruffheisen, your Austrian local bank. <laughs> They're actually Austrian. Oh, this is a very interesting exclusive. This here is yours truly, the working brother, with his grandmother and his mother and his little brother. And this here is Djokovic and his little brother in the 90s at a tennis camp in uh, the mountains of Serbia being taught by an ex-Yugoslav uh, tennis player. That's me right there. That's Djokovic. And uh, that is the celebrity Yugoslav tennis player who taught us. As you can see by our difference in height, I am much older than him, maybe a year or two, I don't know, something like that, I can't remember. But the point is, I beat Djokovic, so there, <laughs> what, when I was what, a kid. With your fist or with a tennis racket? No, no, with a tennis racket, with a tennis racket. The joke in my mom's office is that I was the motivation that got him to like become a world champion because like he lost against me and and <laughs> and it hurt him so bad that he had to become world champion to prove that he was better than me. So that's the joke in my mom's office. So like, so, that's that's. So in a way, in a way, you're you're guilty of all the the sins that he's now committing. Then is that what you're trying? To I do? wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say guilty of all the sins. I might have been a motivation, for, you know, to put him in the path of sinning. <laughs> but I wouldn't say I'm guilty of all of them just by association. But that's an interesting accusation. I've never been accused of that before uh but yes here are a few interesting pictures of Djokovic and myself and that's my little brother there in yellow in the middle with Djokovic and his brother and uh yeah Djokovic what else can be said about him I think we've covered the subject pretty uh, ex uh extensively I think uh considering we've been going on for an hour and six minutes I think uh we've covered uh, this segment pretty well. Anything else you want to ask me about Djokovic? No, no, no I'm happy with that actually. All Just right. New flag, you know, oh, what's that flag? The other one's Scottish. I know that, but what's that one? Oh, that's that's the the lion rampant. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait a minute. It's called the 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 lion rampant. Yep, yep. It's the other Scottish national flag. So it's like the older Scottish national flag. Yeah, yeah. So like the original one, the, huh? Yeah. Well, the the, the Saltair is the oldest, allegedly the oldest flag, um, or one of the which two one? The the cross, flag. huh? The blue, the blue one. Yeah, the blue one. Um, that's the oldest. What did you flag. What did you call it? What's it called? Saltair. Saltair. Yeah, Saltair. Yeah. All right. So, um, you learn you learn something new every day. You learn something new every day, and then you've got the line rampant. Um, again, flags that you would see at uh, Scotland football matches or rugby rugby matches, uh, mm -hmm. and the and the most part the circus. Um, yeah, I used to go to the circus quite regular in that respect. Or All right. The gladiatorial ring, um, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, I saw mm -hmm. just that I don't know when you support. Your country, when you support the things about your country, it seems to be that mm -hmm. flags flags are the only thing you can see. When we mm. spoke earlier about about the the Brits taking flags to wherever they went, who oh, you've not got a flag? Well, we've got our own, right? That's why we don't want that other one. That's why we don't want yeah. the butcher's yeah. apron. Yeah. Um, it's funny you should mention flags, considering, and we're just talking about what's his face, Djokovic, and he just recently won in Australia. Which means Australia technically has to build him a statue, from what I understand. After 10 Australian win champions, uh, championship wins, you have to get a statue. Australian Open. If you win it 10 times, you have to get a statue in Australia, apparently. That's why, originally, they didn't want him in during COVID, because they didn't want to build him a statue. Um, that's my take on it, anyway. But uh, now he has to get a statue anyway, and he recently won. And the reason that I bring it up, because you're talking about flags... They banned uh, Russian and Belarusian flags, and they had people walking around with little papers uh, with pictures of flags. I don't know if you saw the Aussie Cossack. He had a good yeah. report on it. Um, uh, uh, no comment, man. The, no comment. I think the Aussie Cossack's uh, quite good uh, on yeah. his reporting. Um, but yeah, the, the story 
did break the Western news here. Um, mm-hmm. And it was more about <laughs> Novak Djokovic's father um, after the yep. the match in which those flags were displayed, saying "Long live Russia." I think was the yeah the, yeah the, yeah the, the phrase that yeah. Yeah, it's hilarious. Uh, you know, they need a hero. We'll give them a hero. Back to yeah. like that that story. Um, in any case, it's been an hour and ten minutes uh, on the dot now. Uh, thank you, Peter. Tweet Street Scotland welcome. dash occupied, also known as Cinnamon Bridges. Uh, this was a very interesting chat, as was the previous one with you. There will be links somewhere here on screen or elsewhere and uh yeah thank you i'm gonna play some music take us out you got anything to tell the people i uh, just thanks very much for for taking the time to, to sit and listen to what you have um and check out our channels both working brothers and my own um and hope to see and hear from you soon excellent taking it out with some music goodbye everyone don't forget to like share and subscribe And when I say share, I mean like copy the link, send it to somebody, tell them, hey, this is a good video, not just like share it to a random group. All right, I'm out.